Hello everybody, it is me, Pacific, this just in on Pacific Daily News. Men, and hear me carefully, the evidence is overwhelming. The court is out of session. The jury has reached a verdict. Most of you men that I know on YouTube are fine, upstanding citizens that work hard, keep your homes and vehicles clean, pay your bills, don't live deeply in debt, and are decent human beings. You're not ugly dogs. You're not GQ men. But who is? My conclusion. Women don't want you through no fault of your own. I'm making a video today saying it's not your fault guys. I am not talking about men that are jerks. I am not talking about abusive and violent men. I'm not talking about men that don't take care of their physique or their hygiene or whatever. I'm not talking about irresponsible men that buy wheelie toys and snowmobiles and boats and stuff and throw their family under the bus. I'm talking about a plethora of single men that are maybe not GQ, but are not dogs either. Men that work hard, men that are honest, men that have conviction, and men that would make a darn good husband. I was thinking for how many years I lived in the stress of trying so hard to carry myself a certain way to come off with a certain image so as not to offend, so as to be as desirable as I possibly can. And guess what? It doesn't work. <clears throat> Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, another good book, How to Dress for Success. I think both of those books have very good points. I will not attack the authors on those. They're very, very very well-known books and there's some truth in them but I'm gonna tell you something viewers I go to church this morning I go to church where people wear dresses and men wear suits and ties and I show up in my Ocean Pacific t-shirt and my black jeans let me say something if a woman is interested in me she's gonna look right past all of that she's gonna look past the fact I drive an 18 year old truck it doesn't matter if I pulled up in a Lexus SUV. It doesn't matter if I walked in with a suit and tie. I could do all of that and the response would be exactly the same. But gentlemen, for too long we have bought into the lie that it must be something about us. <clears throat> As I have told you before, Pacific has viewed his share of the porn industry. And I'm going to tell you, I have talked to people that I know very well men and women and I find it very interesting that women are very attracted to lesbian porn that women struggle with porn as much if not more than males do <clears throat> and more and more women are experimenting with same-sex relations I have come to the conclusion that many white American women that are well-to-do whatever and being rude to all of us men even though they may be married I have every reason to believe that they are closet experimenting with their lady friends. I have sat back and I asked my sister years ago, what is going on? Why is this happening? Her comment to me was startling. She said, brother, you just now waking up? This has been going on a few years ago. She said, one of the reasons is because women are upset about the way men treated them and I said all of them sister come now she goes no but I think women are finding that it's less messy they don't have to get pregnant they don't have to deal with the messiness of a relationship I want to stop right there I have been enough involved with enough women in my life to know this fact women view things much differently than men Men can go out with a girl, they can have a very intimate time with a girl, and some of us that actually care can be devastated when we're dropped like a rock. 
But for a woman, if she's into somebody, they don't let go easily. Their hearts are wrapped into it. And let me tell you, that can be very, very messy. I said before in one of my videos, one of the reason ups, one of the reasons for the big upsurge in lesbian behavior is because women are narcissistic. I hear them constantly say men are sweaty, hairy, and gross. It's funny. The people I work for here, and when, when I've worked in close proximity to other females, this is what they said. Man, you smell good. You don't have body odor and stink like other guys. Yeah. Huh. You know, it's funny. I know a lot of men out there, and I've never smelled B.O. when I've been in their presence. I've They wear clean clothes, and they take care of themselves. And it's funny. Feminism has gone so far, gentlemen, into making us believe that the fault must lie with us. <clears throat> I don't believe that. Let me give you a couple of reasons for why it is becoming increasingly difficult to find a decent, and when I say attractive, I mean a not a high-maintenance, what we call HM10 woman, but a non-fat, non-obese, I don't live in debt, I'm a simple down-to-earth gal. The reason it's becoming harder is for the following. I was thinking about my truck the other day and how much we as Americans love our automobiles a lot of us obsess over them. I don't. I like my truck and I like to drive. But yet, I think it's interesting that Motor City, Detroit is in big financial trouble. It was one of the richest cities for a while. They were producing a lot of the vehicles we drive. And still, quite a few are made there. Anybody see the movie Cars with Lightning McQueen? That <clears throat> cartoon backdrop was basically Route 66, right through Arizona, New Mexico. <clears throat> I've been on that. I've seen those towns. They're destitute. Old abandoned buildings with pieces of roofing flapping in the wind. Old abandoned buses and washing machines and 50s cars. Old gas pumps that have been vandalized and tore up and tumbleweeds all over the place. Do you know what did it? The automobile. When you can fill up on a tank of gas and get 300, 350, 400 miles, no need to stop there anymore. <clears throat> what I'm saying is, now you can avoid those small towns. You can jet right through them and go right to your destinations. People are moving to the cities because of economics. Cities become more and more depersonalized as so many people don't know each other. Throw in the internet. Now we can get on the internet, and for women, who are always seem to have been a strong consumer culture in America and wanting to buy more stuff, they're fascinated and think that Facebook and their little internet world is more important than a person standing next to them at a bus stop, in a business, whatever. Just yesterday I watched, everywhere I went, on my errands, young women glued their cell phones. And what are they doing? Nothing of really import at all. Nothing. If the power were to go out tomorrow, these women would have a real problem. They wouldn't know what to do. I have noticed when I'm walking in public that women are terrified to be alone. They cannot stand to be alone. So now their cell phone is their friend and they have to be glued to a screen. If it looks like a guy or somebody might talk to them, they're going to pull their cell phone out and bury themselves in Facebook junk. <clears throat> what, what is interesting to me, men, is we have wrongly believed it's us. We didn't dress a certain way. We didn't carry ourselves a certain way. We didn't say the right words, and we second-guess ourselves. Now, there's times we need to analyze. There are times we've blown it. But I'm telling you, based on what I'm seeing today, you can do everything and anything, and you're still not going to get that date, and here's why. One, because you're real. Two, because you have substance. Three, because you're a normal human being. One of the biggest lies in American dating for years has been put on the dog. Put out your best foot. Do all this stuff. Make sure you don't cut the cheese. Don't pick your nose. Don't wear that shirt with B.O. stains on it. I seriously hope you don't do that anyway. 
But the point is, <clears throat> you can do all the right stuff, and she'll still pass you by. It's not about us, guys. It's about the way women are viewing things in general. I talked to my sister again the other day. <clears throat> we revisited this conversation. Why is it so hard to get a date? She said, Pacific, I really think that women have become so independent now. They just don't need guys. They've got their car, their cell phone, their job, their apartment, their dog. Dog, hello. So then I start going, is there something wrong with us that want a relationship? I don't think so. I think we've arrived at a time where, <clears throat> like uh, Star Trek, I always wondered as a kid. Sorry, viewers, you guys are going to think, come on, Pacific, this is out of line. I looked at the men and women on the Starship Enterprise and thought, gosh, did they ever make love at all? I got the feeling that they were just automatons and looking at their screens, and I thought, wow, this is boring. This isn't even reality. Well, we've become like that. But don't kid yourself. Women are having sex. Women are playing with toys. Women are looking at porn, and women are doing closet lesbian behavior. I am tired of this belief that women are so upright and moral and that they don't think like us. Oh, yes, they do. They're just more coy and quiet about it, and they hide it well. <clears throat> a lot of women that don't work and have husbands to take care of them, you would be shocked at what they're doing in the middle of the day while the kids are at school. I'm here to tell you. I can speak from experience of being personally involved with a woman who, <clears throat> unfortunately, I made a choice to get involved with somebody who was not yet divorced and hadn't left her husband. This was a while ago, and she was on dating sites and everything, flirting with men, meeting with men for coffee, on and on it goes. And I am guilty for being part of that. But the point that I'm trying to make is, because of the internet world, people can do all kinds of things in a day, and then their husband comes home, and their husband has no clue. Same with the husbands. Their wives have no clue what they're doing. Married men are texting other women at a frenetic pace. I was thinking, somebody made a comment, you look like a monk with your shaved head, and I thought, boy, what would that be like, me being a monk? Now, I don't support Catholicism, but I thought... What would it be like to go away for one year, somewhere far away, shut off the internet, dump my phone, and just go off? Now, if I'm going to do that, I have only one condition. It has to be in Asia. I don't want to do it here. It would just be totally, totally debilitating to me. But I'd love to be in some province in Asia where I have no internet, no phone, and just around the local people and just learn. I wonder what it would be like to cleanse myself of all of that for one year. And then come back to America, fly in, get back in the school bus, get back in the groove, and be totally shocked. As I said before, viewers, most of what women are doing online and with their cell phones amounts to dust in the wind. And as Burn the Ender wisely put it, <clears throat> these women don't have any substance. That is absolutely true. But they have been duped by the media to believe that they're the jet set generation. We've got our cell phones, we got our SUVs. We're where cool is defined. I don't know what it is about American society that they haven't learned a long time ago that the masses are generally wrong. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at Adolf Hitler and how he mustered all of Germany to get behind him. With the exception of people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer and others who stood up and said, ah, this is not right. They were silenced, they were quashed, and Many of them were killed. <clears throat> Are the masses always right? I don't think so. Yet our media has taught women today that they are more valuable than us males because of their sexual uh, anatomy and they have become conditioned to believe that they can get whatever they want by shaking their boobs around. And that is a fact. We talk about college education. There's a lot of women that get jobs that have no college whatsoever simply on their looks alone. And they're pulling down good money. 
Men are more willing to train a hot babe to do a job than they are a guy. We guys literally have to work hard. And this crap that I hear that women are getting paid substandard wages compared to men, that, my friend, is not substantiated whatsoever. I've read stuff over and over that, that dispels that myth. If anything, women are getting treated more favorably than American males today. Are there jerk males? Are there racist, chauvinistic, misogynistic males? You bet. But is it safe to say that most women are guilty of misandry of the highest order? You better believe it. And you don't hear anything about that. You never hear a woman called a chauvinist. Well, it's the same thing. Many of them are. And just like somebody pointed out, I go out in public and I hear women talking loud and showing their cleavage. And it's funny. I'll hear those same women say, look at that, not me, but others, look at that guy walking around with no shirt. And you want to say, look at that woman walking around with her cleavage showing. And see, it's okay for them to do this, but it's not okay for men to do this. And I'm telling you guys, it's not your fault. It is not your fault. If you're being offensive and a jerk, you know you're being offensive and a jerk. But quit trying so hard. Many men that watch my videos have joined men going their own way and my hats off to them if they can do it but I will tell you men at the same time if you're really going to do that don't look at porn don't look at those beautiful women you get control of your sex drive and just say no to it all I like women I love women I don't like what's happened to the women in our culture I never will at work, I constantly look at women, and because when you're in an environment, you start changing and start uh, to fit in your environment and realize when in Rome, I start looking at some of the ladies around me going, gosh, I'd date her. But then you spend some time getting to know these people, and you think, my gosh, they got a, you know, a 10-mile train load of baggage and problems, and, <clears throat> you know, you got to go on the whole interview. And <clears throat> it's funny, just this week, there's a gal that, She's a Christian gal. She has slept with man after man after man because she's human. But then she keeps running back and getting this religious spirit and suddenly saying, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put God first in my life, but she's got another boyfriend clinging on. And then she'll come up to me and tell me somebody said something highly inappropriate to me, and yet she has told me about her sexual follies and been very transparent about that. And I finally said, you know what? Stay away from this girl. She's double-minded. She's all over the place. One minute she gets religious. Next minute she's an immoral pig. And then she's running in there carrying herself like she's a, she called herself a prophetess for Jesus. Okay. I don't know what is wrong with females. I don't know how they can actually get up in the morning and think that their compass is pointing true north. But they are heavily deluded, heavily deceived. Then they are bought and owned by our media and our consumeristic corporate mentality. Women are not liberated at all. They are in more bondage than you can shake a stick at. Bondage to the belief that it's okay to act like a man. Bondage to the belief that all men are evil. <clears throat> Yet they never say anything about the fact that they came from our semen. And women can say and do things over and over and over. <clears throat> Woman on a dating site, I had posted a post. It was very sarcastic, nailing all of the problems I see with the women on these profiles. The obesity, the attitudes, the smoking pot, everything. Woman by the name of the ID of Devil's Advocate would keep writing me. And I said, please do not write me. This stuff is garbage and it's untrue. She kept saying stuff like, the reason you write these things, you can't get a date because you have a small penis. <laughs> and I thought, and you know that, right? First thing I told her, it is not my style to brag about what my size is or what my size isn't. Number one, so you're inappropriate. Number two, don't send me these emails as I will consider them a form of harassment. And I learned something then. Play the same game women do and it works. She wouldn't quit. Then she sent me a picture of a gun. And I had posted something, say, beware devil's advocate. This woman 
writes every man man bashing us. She is anti-male, and she bashes every legitimate post out there of us men saying we're tired of the games people are playing online. And guess what? <clears throat> she wrote me back saying, if you ever come to my door, the bullets will come flying. I thought, you dumb broad. I posted all of that right on the site. All of a sudden, she went away, and I posted this post. Beware devil's advocate. She makes death threats. If you get anything from the ID devil's advocate, turn it all over to the police department. They can trace her through the server and find her. This stuff is totally, totally inappropriate. She stopped. Men employ to women the same tactics they do to us. Because if it's wrong for us males to do stuff like that, it is definitely wrong for females to do it. I'm learning. I'm learning little by little, and I'm having great fun with it. I have done that at work. If you want to continue making inappropriate comments to me about my glasses, I will be more than happy to file a complaint with the supervisor. Okay? That usually shuts it down. <clears throat> because women have wielded that power for a long time, and now they're finding out that, guess what? We can use those same rules against them. And it works. And it gets results. <clears throat> Some of the women at work that I told you about that are very rude and haters, all of a sudden they're being nice because management came down and said, if you keep giving dirty looks, making inappropriate comments, and I don't care if you're family and I don't care what your position is, I will ask you to clock in for your bus route, clock out after your bus route and leave the terminal and you will not be welcome to stay into the break room. All of a sudden, they're cleaning up their act and they're being more congenial, saying hello to me and others, and I thought, isn't that interesting? Men, if we start standing up the BS of American women and we do it corporately, we'll back them into a corner and they'll realize that they got to play by the same rules they expect us to. But men, if you're afraid of women and you're afraid of offending them or you want to be hero status, and give it up. Be yourself. And if women don't like you, oh my gosh, you're not losing out. Do you want those kind of women anyway? <clears throat> I don't. I'm learning as I get older, it's okay for us men to be picky, too. Because by picky, I'm really not picky. I'm My requirements actually go back 50, 60 years ago. I just want a woman who's attractive, takes care of herself, is nice, and isn't caught up in all this crapola. Is that picky? I don't think so. The problem is, is women have uh, learned to criticize us men for having any expectations on them while they have a laundry list of expectations for us. There's a word for that, and it's called hypocrisy. Men, stop believing it's you. It isn't. <clears throat> you may not be the greatest looking. Sorry. Pacific blows his nose and everything on YouTube. Isn't that fun? <clears throat> now, I want to say something about that. I just tell up a piece of Kleenex. By the way, there's no boogers all over it. You want to know what's interesting? Have you watched these YouTube videos and watched what women do? Have any of you guys, in your more sordid moments and feeling desperate and lonely, and that is why men look at porn. Men suddenly realize there must be something wrong with me, and they get depressed and they go to porn. Let me say something. That is a dead-end street. The very women that we're criticizing... Those same women you're looking at that are taking off their clothes, they're not going to give you the time of day. Don't give them the satisfaction. Don't put the hits on the porn site and ignore them all. But let me say something. You ever see those sites where, like, free cams, a woman's eating something, and then she's laying there and sullen look because nobody's paying her to look at her cam. And You look at what they do and how they carry themselves. Because they're good-looking, men will look the other way. They can wear butt-ugly strapped and ripped up clothing and nobody looks at that gosh what an ugly top when we men get control of our lust factor and start becoming more objective we will put these women right where they belong over there by the trash can because <clears throat> we need to start being as critical of them as they are of us Say, gosh, you can't even wear decent clothes. They're all ripped up and cut up. And just because you're showing some skin, we ignore all that because we get to see the skin. Men, we need to stop thinking with the head between our legs. And we need to think with the one on our neck. And there is no other way to say it. We need to stop giving these women any attention, any due at all. <clears throat> Yesterday, I walked around the lake. 
there are many attractive women that walk there, and I've already done the drill. You say hi to them, they're stuck up, they're rude, and it dawned on me, why do I need to smile and be nice to these people? Now, I'm not going to be rude, but I don't look at them. I look over the distance, there's geese and ducks on the lake, and I just pretend I don't see them. And I notice something. I have nothing to gain by being kind to them. We're not going to go on a date. We're not going to do business together. And I'm noticing something. I say hi to the people that look approachable. And I want to make it clear, I don't ignore all white women. But good-looking white women, I don't even look at them. I just ignore them. And the reason? There's nothing in it for me to, to, to be civil to them. In my job, I will be civil to people because I have to. But on my own time, I'm finding... I find myself attracted more to ethnicities anyway, and I will say hi to them, but most of these high-caliber, high-maintenance white women, I ignore them. There is no, there is no fruitfulness in wasting my time, because I've learned, we tend to look at that and go, gosh, she's cute. You're not going to get her, guys, and she ain't interested in you. She's probably interested in her girlfriend and what they did in the closet last night or she's getting high off the new SUV she bought. I'm telling you, it's not you, it's them. The other day, yesterday, I went to a thrift store and there was a tall white woman, very good looking. I had to go buy her. She had no bra on, her nipples were poking through so prominently. And I just thought, you know, I wanted so bad to say, wow, those are nice nipples. And I and I wanted to say it simply to make a point and watch her just go, ah. Say, well, ma'am, if you don't want people to notice it, maybe you ought to put a bra on. But I didn't say it. I thought, yep, yeah, I would be in trouble. I would be out of line. And I thought, she is not interested in me or any of us other guys. She just wants everybody to see that she's got nice nipples. I'm tired of it. I am sick of women teasing us leading us on, getting us to look so that they can snub us. It's a power trip, guys. And I did not. As soon as I saw it, I averted my eyes and I thought, keep going, Pacific. Don't even give her the freaking time of day. Try a little game, guys. Ignore those women and watch what happens. Oftentimes, you'll find that they'll fall all over themselves to say hi to you. Why? He ignored me. But I wouldn't give in so easily. They say, I say, I keep walking. You know why? Because women like to attract the attention of us, even if they're not interested in us, because it's a power trip for them. I like the women that are in the restaurant talking very loud so that everybody hears them and they think they're all cool and all that, or in a line or whatever. And I'll just talk to somebody and I'll ignore them, ignore them, and then they'll suddenly say something to me, and it's like, lady, I have no interest in talking to you. I don't say that, but I'm thinking it. And uh, it is interesting. Women are attention whores, too. Don't kid yourself. But if you, like a puppy dog, walk down the street, look at these good-looking women, go, <laughs> they go, I got him, now I can snub him. If you ignore them, and you look like you're a dog headed on a mission, and you looking at that juicy bone somewhere else out in the distance, it drives them nuts. It's not you guys. It's the culture we live in. They already made a decision long ago. I was telling a woman on a date a week ago the following. I said, I have noticed something in my life that women do what I call the two-second scan. Women are very good at this. Women do what's called spider webbing. You can talk to them, and they'll just suddenly flit off into another subject. And it drives men nuts, but women are capable of that. And I've learned that when they start doing that, and it's time to tune them out. But they will go off onto this and off onto that, and they're jumping from one ring and one strand of web to another very quickly. Sometimes they're able to process things faster than some of us. Sometimes it's just a form of rudeness that they use to their advantage. But women do what I call the two-second scan. When you're walking down the sidewalk and you're in the airport, wherever, yes, most people have other stuff on their minds. But if a woman's single and she's hunting, in two seconds, she's already made an assessment of you. And I'm going to tell you something. When you guys learn to catch that two-second scan, and she doesn't smile, and she continues on, 
she's already, you've already been nixed out of any potential date with that woman. I believe that with all my heart. Women, when they're interested in somebody, they lock their radar onto that man. <clears throat> this idea that you can win them over. Remember Steve Urkel, Family Matters? I'm wearing you down, Laura. 99.9% .9 of the time, that does not occur in American society. A woman is interested in you, or she's not. I've done this long enough, and I've watched. I can tell when a woman's interested in me, even in a workplace. Hey, I notice you new here, and they start talking. There's little signals they give off. And they haven't talked to me. They haven't asked me how much I've earned. They've just, they've got an attraction. And that's what it is, guys. Quit trying to say the right words. Quit trying to schmooze her and win her over. Ignore her. In the context of work, be civil, be polite, make your talk extremely small, business related, and let her know in no uncertain terms by your talk and tone of voice, I'm here to work, I'm not interested in you. When we men learn this, we will realize we have the power, just as much as they have the power. And what we need to do is take that power away from them and take the power that we have a right to and start playing their game right back. It works. It's not your fault, guys. I'm telling you. Be encouraged. It's not your personality. It's not your looks. It's nothing else. Women have been massaged by corporate America. They've been massaged by the clothing industry, the music industry, the entertainment industry to look at us, hardworking, ordinary Joes, as a bunch of walking, useless garbage. That's not our fault. I would also recommend every one of you guys quit watching those sitcoms, quit endorsing ABC, NBC, CBS, and all this media that's driving the nail in further and further against us males. Boycott is in order. This is Pacific, signing off. Bye-bye.